What's up, Drop Pod listeners? You can check out new episodes of the Drop Podcast every Tuesday and Thursday, wherever you listen to podcasts. You can find all of our content on YouTube at the Drop Golf Podcast and on our socials. That's Instagram and Twitter at the Drop underscore pod. No matter how you consume us, like, subscribe, rate, review, all that good stuff. Follow and listen along. This episode is presented by All County Exteriors. Discover the excellence of All County Exteriors, a third generation leader in premier exterior home remodeling, proudly celebrating over 40 years of success. While most remodeling companies last just five years, All County Exteriors has withstood the test of time, consistently delivering top quality roofing, siding, windows, and doors. Their expertise extends from small repairs to large additions, serving homeowners and builders alike. More than just a construction company, All County Exteriors is deeply committed to community service, proudly supporting organizations such as the Make-A-Wish Foundation, the American Cancer Society, Roost for Troops, and Parents of Autistic Children. If you have planned to do any exterior modeling, call the experts at All County Exteriors for a free, no-obligation estimate for your project. Just call 732-370-2780 or email them at info at allcountyonline.com. That's 732 732- 370-2780 for all county exteriors for all your remodeling needs. This is the Drop Podcast where we talk golfing in the Garden State. I'm Mike Poro and this is Ryan Kula. What's up, Drop Pod people? How you doing this week? Welcome back to episode 107. Mike and I here uh, on the ones and twos on the mics here for you. Uh, let's let's get a quick uh, quick recap of our week, Mike, and then get into the show. I know you're excited to talk about what we got to talk about today. Uh, first things first. Yesterday, uh, well, today is October 22nd. Yesterday, the 21st, was Magic Mike Monday. Mike played the fourth hole at Francis Burn. I'm sorry, the ninth hole par four at Francis Burn. Yes, we went up to Francis Burn. You're going to see a theme today. We got up there. Mike played the fourth hole. That came out yesterday. Go check it out. Instagram, YouTube, uh, anywhere you get, you, you follow our stuff there. But that's out on, that came out yesterday. Uh, today, episode 107, you got Mike and I here. Uh, you can check us out on YouTube. You get the full video version there. Uh, rate, review, subscribe, all that good stuff over on uh, on YouTube, on Instagram, anywhere you're getting to us, uh, please, it, it does us, it does wonders for us. Tomorrow, the 23rd, Ryan verse Francis Byrne, fourth hole, par four. I really like, Mike, when they have, like, the fourth hole is a par four, the fifth hole is a par five. Don't know why I started it this way, but the third hole is a par three. Don't know why. I just like the symmetry. But... Uh, I played the fourth hole again, Mike and I got up there par four, go check it out again, YouTube, Instagram, wherever you get it. I don't know, Mike, if yours, uh, is the same because of the timing that it was, but you remember when we teed off, it was atrocious weather. So my par four or, or my fourth hole is the rain pants are on the the you can see the the rain is in the video it was a nasty day when we got up there i don't know if yours is the same because it did get it did go kind of in and out for the rest of the I day i think but... mine is mine is more dead smack in the middle yeah just an overcast day okay uh and then thursday interview thursday uh we got to sit down we got up to francis burn we played with uh Tim Christ, who is the director of golf operations for the Essex County Parks, um, and uh, one of the superintendents at Francis Byrne. It was a great day with those guys. It was a lot of fun. Um, but we sat down with Chris, uh, Tim in the in the afternoon, you know, in the afternoon, I guess, after our round, and kind of debriefed and, and talked a lot about the the redo, the history, the all, all this stuff that. Um, that we had to talk about because we've had a lot of, of conversations about Francis Byrne and how it's one of the nicest public courses in the state. We've talked a lot about how, um, or, or we should say not a lot, but recently we talked about how it's the best course under a hundred dollars. We did that a couple of weeks ago. Was it Mike? So a lot of big things, um, 
a lot of big things there to uh, you know to to recap. So we sat down with Tim, but we actually sat down with him for a long time, and we we, we really we really hammered it out. It's I think we sat down for over an hour with him, um, and, and you know kind of kind of kept going back and forth. So uh, that's Thursday, and then Friday we have Freaky Fun Friday, uh, and I do want to point out if you didn't uh, go back last Freaky Fun Friday which was the 18th, uh, head over to our Instagram, head over to our YouTube page. It's, the YouTube's where it's going to live because we put out a long-form video of our time at Yasna Palana. And it's not something Mike and I do all the time with these long-form things, but it is something that we were able to do, um, put out the the little bit of history, a um, little bit more than just like our interview, so to speak. You know, we, we put out the whole you know, a little recap video and it was Mike, I thought it was really good. I thought it was, it came out great. You know, when you're doing it, it's, it's uh, you're trying to have these ideas and then making them come together. Like I said, I, I thought it really came out well. Yeah. I think you did an excellent job with it. There's no two ends, two ways around it. I mean, I, I mean, when I was watching it, you know, I loved how you set it to a premiere and made it look like, you know, kind of like a big deal to, to go watch. I, I thought the kind of like the trailer that was on our story to promote it was, was really you know, well put together too. Um, and, and I think gives the audience a behind the scenes. And I think it's a great recap to what our week was truly like mm -hmm. there. So again, if you haven't watched it, head on over to YouTube, give it a check out. It's a, it's the first video right there. Kind of speaking of that, we also started a new series, I guess, Mike, we haven't really uh, officially uh, talked about this yet, but I guess this is what we're doing. We're, we're kind of, Mike and I played the second hole par three there beautiful beautiful hole i say it multiple times last week uh, i say it in the video i think it might be one of the best par threes in new jersey aesthetically beautiful it's challenging um it's i think it has everything a par three needs we we played a, a ryan versus mike a mike versus ryan however you want to however you want to call it and and uh you know put it out there but we put that out on saturday um as a you know that's that's on the instagram it's a reel and I think we, I think we might have a new, a new series must might be born from both of us wanting to record the same holes. So yeah, listen, anytime you, you want to play straight up, I'm all in on that. And I think this is a great way for, for people to dabble a little bit, to throw some, you know, throw some money on, on a side and see what happens. I mean, straight up is right up my alley. No strokes given. Um, I don't know where we you're getting know, that from, but okay. I think it was in the description. Oh, I don't think it was. Oh, well, I mean, maybe, maybe I have I to go. I'm, Hold on. You knew the descriptions. Maybe you Maybe I misread maybe it. Maybe I misread it. it. <laughs> but nonetheless, I think it's a good little thing for us to go out there and kind of go mano y mano um, on, on nonetheless playing, you know, and I put this podcast clip out the other day about you making that bold statement. I put it on TikTok. I put it on Instagram. And we had a couple of responses and comments on there saying, wow, that is a bold comment um, because you make one. And I, it's hard to kind of argue against it. I, I think that it's bold in that it's stating something is as good as it is, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's a stretch. I think it's, I think it's very well reasonable to be within the conversation of the best par threes in New Jersey. And it's, and not that we've played every course, but it's definitely one of the best par threes that we've played this year. And I think that's a preview of a topic that we're going to have later this year when our, when our season is done. Cause that's something we got to talk about, but we do always talk about how these par threes are so beautiful, right? So maybe that's our, our thing. We're going to take on a par three, you versus me. Uh, you're going to give me the appropriate show strokes, but we'll do it for the end of the year and see where we go from there. <laughs> so that came out Friday, uh, Saturday. So that was a Friday, Saturday video release that we kind of, kind of teased a little bit last week, but we, we wanted to kind of put out there now. So if you didn't, again, head over to YouTube to see the the Yasna Palana video. Head over to Instagram to check out the Mike vs. Ryan reel that we put out there. Are you looking for the perfect place to host the wedding of your dreams? Or maybe your company is looking to host an unforgettable holiday party with the beautiful backdrop of a golf course. 
or just looking for a great spot for casual comfort food, then you need to visit Galloping Hill Golf Course in Kenilworth, New Jersey. Conveniently located in Union County, right off exit 138 on the Garden State Parkway, Galloping Hill encompasses over more than 270 beautiful acres. Book your special day in their recently updated banquet space and enjoy the wonderful scenery on the golf course during your on-site ceremony. You could also host your holiday party in their formal ballroom or in the casual setting of the Hill Tavern Bar and Grill. The Gastro Pub with seasonal food and beer options updated regularly. Their catering teams consistently win awards each year from the Knot and Wedding Wire. Schedule a tour for your special event at the clubhouse at gallopinghill.com. Don't forget, golf never stops at Galloping Hill either. Open all year round. Go enjoy the course on those nice days in the winter and hang out in the tavern after your round. The fun never stops at Galloping Hill Golf Course. This week, Mike, we are obviously going to talk about Francis Byrne because we just talked about how it's going to be our our day there, kind of a, a recap, wrap up of of our time there. Um, since both of us recorded, you know, we, we gave, kind of gave it away already. But before that, Mike, you got some updates for us on the store and, and some other things. So why don't you give us uh, give us your updates here? Yeah, so listen, I, I can't thank everybody that's already ordered things. Um, I will say the hot thing that's flying off the racks that I kind of thought would be more like a hoodie-based thing, like, all right, you know, everything's affordable, everything's good quality. I thought the hoodies would be the number one thing. But, man, oh, man, when I check the what has been ordered list, man, these hats are hot. These hats are hot. I've been telling I can't, you, Mike. Every, I'm a fashionista, I, baby. You got to listen. Every time I check the orders, it's a hat, another hat, another hat. So, listen – not for nothing. I, I got to check out the store again. I, I mentioned this. The idea here is not to make money. It's not to do anything like that, but it's to find good quality pieces of product and get people wearing them. That's it. Priced affordably. You got to go check it out. But here's the catch. I know people had asked me, Mike, I can't find the link. I can't find the link. I was getting DMs. People were telling me through text messages, even in person. Well, now when you go to our Instagram account at the drop underscore pod in the link, Okay, the link tree. You click that little link there. Boom, what pops up? The very first thing that you can click on says merch order here. You click that link, it goes straight to the website. Then from the where there on the website, you can scroll and check out everything that's there. You got the trucker hat. You got two different short sleeve shirts with different logos on the front. You got the hoodie in two different colors. It's all right there. Simple, easy, effective. Don't miss out. Go get your stuff. I promise you will not be disappointed. I know I've made green screen video after green screen video the past week kind of promoting this, um, but it's there. And, and again, I can't thank everybody that's already been purchasing things as it is. Yeah. Thank you for, for everybody who has, like Mike said, um, you know, it is, uh, I will say, cause my notifications are on every time a merch order comes across, we get a notification, you know, on this thing and it's, you know, it's been nice to, to see, but also like I'm doing a lot of swiping. I feel like I'm single again, right? A lot of swiping away, uh, swiping right on, on things there. So um, it, it is really cool. Again, as, as Mike said, size up because uh, it, it is needed. But um, I, I was I was hoping my hat would be in for this week, Mike, but um, I'll get it for next week. But I'm so looking forward to the hat. Uh, professional tour, no updates on the, on the corn ferry. Cause corn ferry is over. Uh, there is going to be Q school and that kind of stuff down the road. Mike, again, you, you're more, you're more checked into that. Yeah, as more I towards be. the end of the month. As we get closer towards the end of the month, I'll start updating yeah. it. I don't want to like is that October, or November. It's end of October, early November. Okay. Um, so we got that going on, but right now the PGA tour is, is rocking and rolling. Uh, the Shriners children's open. Uh, was going on this week and and as of us recording right now uh chris made the cut which which is great again making cuts cash and check and check cash and checks uh is always a big deal um cash and checks and snapping necks always big uh but ryan making a making a run he was uh he's currently top 15 as of us recording which is which is huge Again, we need that. That we need him to be. Uh, we need him to to finish high in this and, and get kind of get rocking and rolling here. You know, he's got. Yeah, and I many, do want to put how many tournaments we got left. We got four left or three, I think, after, after this, this week. Yeah, um, I don't want to misspeak, but that's what I thought it was too. 
Yeah, and, and put this out there, like, you know, Ryan, you know, and people may say it's Tuesday, what's going on? How come, you know, well, when we're recording, they've had a lot of wind issues out in Vegas where a lot of things have been delayed. They've pushed things back. Um, so when we're recording, I, I mean, listen, at one point, Ryan was tied for the lead. Um, and, and obviously when we're recording, he only sits three back and they still got to finish the third round. They still got to finish the fourth round. Um, so when we're recording this, it's, it's still ongoing. So you might see a video pop out on Monday, um, from, from us just pushing this real quick and saying, Hey, listen, congrats, so on and so forth. Cause if, if the miracle does happen and he goes from having to withdraw last week for a wrist, wrist injury, and then comes out of nowhere and wins this week. He'll be off the, Z the Zozo Z Championship in, in Japan because currently next week, that's where they're off to. Or I should say this week, that's where they're off yeah. to. And only Chris and Max are in the field. So, and the only reason um, Max is going is through the sushi. <laughs> no doubt about it. <laughs> and I will say this. I know you kind of like that video I put out of Morgan Hoffman. I, I You know, he Monday qualifies. He gets in the tournament. And, you know, I put that in the video saying, you and I discussed this. We didn't know if his season was done. Yeah. And he's not done yet clearly yeah unfortunately he didn't make the cut but listen we know those low rounds are in him and i will say this i was dming back and forth with danny rap about it mm -hmm. and he said listen the dude has got a lot of game he does you know so listen you never know he's got it all so there we go kind of a preview review recap of our of our week and the professional tours and and all that mike let's get into the to the crux of this episode today all right we got our time at Francis Byrne. And, like, I, I want to start with this. I didn't realize how uh, – I thought that Francis Byrne was, like, way far up north, right? You hear that it's in is it East Orange, West Orange, something like that. It's in one of the oranges. And East I, Orange. East Orange. And I think that it's, like, super far away, right? It was a super easy drive to get there. Uh, it took less than 45 minutes for me to get up there. Now, granted – no traffic at the time that, that we drove up and went. We had the the first tee time uh, on a rainy day. You know, we, we were going to get up there and be, you know, in, in no time flat. So I, I wasn't necessarily worried about that. But if you're if you're going during traffic time, obviously it's going to take you a little bit longer. But if you get one of those early tee times, you could really get there in in no time flat. It was super easy on and off the parkway, basically. Um, really, really good spot. Uh, to travel to if you're looking to get to a new spot that is a little bit different for you maybe a little outside your zone you think like all oh, the oranges are so far away uh, honestly it really wasn't it really wasn't far away you know from from where I live like I said less than 40 minutes um, again super early in the morning you know we were on the road at you know six o'clock um, to get there for our you know 7 30 tea time or whatever it was but really no problem there so if you're looking for something that kind of outside your zone a little bit a real easy drive for sure yeah i mean listen you know and, and when we see golf week put out this episode this article of top golf courses in new jersey under a hundred dollars and this course is on it it's like all right well guess what we are packing our bags and we're heading there so i reached out to kevin purcell at the njsga and say listen can you get me in contact with tim um, who's the, basically the director of golf operations up there. Let's, let's sit down with him. I know Essex County is spending a boatload of money to fix up all their golf courses. Mm -hmm. This being the first one, let's make it happen. Let's sit down and talk. And Tim was kind enough to get us that first tee time with, with Chris out there, the superintendent to kind of like go experience the golf course. And I will say this, the, the, it wasn't ideal conditions. We weren't sitting out there in sun and, and warmth. It was raining and it was cold and the wind was blowing. Despite so it was a Mike's challenge. Wearing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just yeah. Listen, clearly, someone was not dressed for the occasion, um, and someone who gets cold rather easily, awful start for someone like me. Um, but nonetheless, you know, I got to thank those guys for for organizing this, setting this all up. But I will say this: I wish Francis Byrne was in the county that I lived in, and I could play this golf course for under a hundred dollars every single week. I mean, because this place for a public golf course was in unbelievable shape. I know I can be a very harsh critic at times. I know I can be very, very opinionated at times, and I never find a way to not have a comment on something. This place did not disappoint. Not it well. was so damn good. The greens were rolling. It was cut very well. I loved how lush and green it looked. 
boy, oh boy, those people in Essex County, man, they are spoiled. Mm-hmm. Very spoiled. It, it is. It's it's rivaling, rivaling one of the top golf courses, public golf courses in New Jersey. I mean, it's right up there with with your Bally Owens. Like you, you talk about, like the the Bally Owen and Hominy Hill traditionally and Nishanik. and Nishanik traditionally are are one, two, three in some kind of order for the last how many years, Mike? I mean, going back, I feel like it's nearly twenty five years, maybe even more. But like in my golfing lifetime. Those are the three that you hear all the time. I'm telling you that that Francis Byrne is is as good as those. It was so, so, so good. It really was. It was, uh, like Mike said, it was it was in pristine shape for a public golf course. It was in as it was in country club shape. It was challenging. It was, I mean, even in, in the conditions that we played it, the greens rolled great. Uh, there was no, it wasn't like there was any water. It drained well. It had the views of like the mountains. Um, it, it was, wow. It was, it was really a special day for us. Yeah. And to give the audience a little perspective about the place real quick, you know, obviously it was designed by Banks. It's a Banks golf course. Um, so you see a lot of his characteristics throughout the whole thing. Um, which I, you know, as 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 I've been in this, and I'm starting to nerd out about the architecture a little more. Where I was all about just like the aesthetics. I think the architecture is kind of cool because each guy that puts his stamp on it, you can clearly start to see, wow, that's that's neat, or I kind of like that, or I frankly don't. Mm-hmm. This just hit, and and I think, you know, that you know, it was designed in 1926. It was part of Essex County Essex County Country Club. It was 36 holes up there. Then these 18 became. Um, went back to the park system, they bought it back, so on and so forth, and it became its own little spot. And, and clearly, the people in Essex County, um, you know, that, that county executive, you know, I, I, hopefully I pronounce his name correctly, Joe DiVincenzo, really has said, you know, listen, we're going to value this. Mm-hmm. We're going to value this. Tim, I'm going to put a lot of trust in you to, to get these going. And man, oh man, have they hit it out of the ballpark with that. And do they have the perfect person with with Tim doing it? I mean, Tim's a former uh, golf course superintendent, uh, so he knows the the ground the grass. side he of knows it. The grass. He knows like yeah, he knows the construction side, the ground side. Uh, but now he's doing like you know overseeing, so he's doing like general manager. I mean, you, you got a perfect person there to overlook all this construction that they're doing. I mean, they had Stephen K come in, did. Uh, who Stephen K did the the rose in Old Bridge, he did the reconstruction at Francis Byrne. He's now doing um, Week Wake. Is that the one they're working on now? So I mean, Stephen's doing all the work, you know, f- for these guys here. It, it just is, it, it's, it is really really good. And to to your point, Mike, again, you like the golf course architecture. I'm I'm I nerd out about that as well. And you start to see who you like, right? Like. Love Donald Ross. He's got beautiful features. I play awful on his golf courses. I just can't play them. They're hard. You know, they're hard. Whereas on the opposite, right? A.W. Tillinghouse. Love his stuff, right? I tend to play much better on his on his courses. So, like, you start to see, like, okay, this is a this is a Banks course. And, you know, what does that mean? Where does he like to do? What are some of his features? You start to see the differences and the intricacies there. And, and then you go back to even now – Again, my forte, the the history nerd in me goes like, like, oh, it's got it's got golden age architecture. Goes back to was a country club, part of Essex uh, County or Essex, yeah, Essex County Country Club was um, the lower course or the west course, whatever they whatever they called it. And just you, you go through like the history. The rerouting was really cool to talk to Tim about, like, oh, when this was. Uh, when this was part of the country club, this was the first hole. This was the ninth hole, kind of like how they routed it. And I mean, I'll say this about, again, finish this with Banks. I think we were going through, Mike, the ninth, uh, the tenth hole, or maybe it was 11 coming back. And the course is like tiered, right? If you're, you, you come into the park and you're, you're on the lower tier and like a couple holes are on the flat part. Then you kind of level up and there's a couple holes on like this, on like these steps almost going up to, and, and even I would imagine that Essex County, the, the country club is the same way. Like as you move up and, and I'm going through and I, I looked over to Chris and I said, 
it's amazing to me how a golf course architecture or architect can walk in the woods and over the rocks that are there, like these mountain rocks, and go, yeah, that's a putting green right there. It's mind-blowing to me because there's some parts that are thick, and how they build a golf course here, I don't know. Hey, listeners. Are you ready for an unforgettable experience? Ticksforgood.org is giving you the chance to win two weekend passes to the 2025 Masters Golf Tournament. That's right. This is your chance to be a part of golf history at one of the most iconic sporting events in the world. All you have to do to enter is head to ticksforgood.org and make a donation to one of over 300 amazing nonprofits listed. Pick your cause, make your impact, and you're automatically entered. It's really that simple. And a huge thank you to their incredible sponsors, David Scales at State Farm, Prelude Solutions, Goaded Putters, and Slam Sunscreen, supporting causes that make a difference. Don't miss out. Visit Ticks for Good. That's T-I-X-F-O-R-G-O-O-D dot org today. Make a donation and you could be headed to Augusta for the 2025 Masters. Best of luck to all. And I think I kind of misspoke earlier. It's in West Orange. I think I might have said East Orange. I wasn't sure. So I want to make sure I correct myself there. That's that's okay. I covered us. I said the oranges. Yeah. (laughs) But, you know, I, you know, I, we and I, we talked about this a lot, you and I on the courses. You loved how each of the holes had a name. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's my favorite. And that was, that's one of the things that I think we have to touch on because I don't know how many times that we were out there that you kept saying, you know, I love this. Mm -hmm. I love this. It gives me a name. It gives me a little description. And some people don't like it because they think the card is too much then. It's just too much. But I know you loved it. And I think some of the things that like really stood out to me was the Baritz on number two. Unbelievable. Par three. You got the Baritz there. Not many times you see that in, in modern golf architecture. You just don't. You have the punch bowl greens. You have all the you have the back-to-back par fives. You got you have all these banks like things add it with some deep history and i know you love that yeah i know you love yeah. that i i really do and and there's nothing to me uh and maybe it's because i really do love that golden age of architecture because it does seem like these golf course architects uh, we just mentioned them you, you know your your donald ross's the tilling house the the banks the rainers they tend to name their golf holes more than people do now or, or in that golden age, more than they did in the 50s, 60s, 70s. For whatever reason, uh, I absolutely love that. I think it gives, I like reading about it. it. It gives you an insight into what the architect was thinking when they built that course and kind of how you should play it, right? So like, again, ours, the, the fourth hole, I'll give you an example. The fourth hole is called Plateau because like I said, you're, you're, the course is built in steps, So essentially on the fourth hole, you're on the, you're teeing off on the lower step and you're hitting up to the higher step. And so you're hitting up to a plateau. And then not only that, then you have to hit to another plateau onto the green, which is up even higher. So the whole hole is uphill and on the card. So on the card, if you don't have any of that description, you go, Oh, this is a 341 yard par four. This is going to be easy. No, 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 no. It plays much closer to 400 yards because the entire thing is uphill. With the weather that we had, it played every bit of it. And I mean, it was a, it was a, it was a challenging hole. But again, when I see, and I get to read a little bit about it, I can, I can be a little bit in the mindset. I don't know. I think it gives you, I think it gives you great insight onto what the architect was thinking. And I just, I cannot tell you how much I love that feature. Yeah, and you add in on 17, they had the reverse for Dan on mm-hmm. 17. So, like, you got – there's so many unbelievable characteristics about this this place that you really cannot go wrong. So, when golf – 10 to 11, put, Mike, t- sorry to interrupt, 10 to 11, the runoff, you know that you yeah. know that gets me all tingly. The, yeah, the 10 to, 10's green 10's to 11's green tee box. 10's green to 11's tee box is all shaved off right into the mm-hmm. – the, ooh, there that that yeah. gets me that gets me going so yeah so many cool features there they really have them all yeah and to my point so when golf week puts out this top 
golf courses, public golf courses under hundred dollars. Listen, I know at times I can be very critical and I can I can argue against at any point, sometimes even if I don't believe in it. They nailed this yeah, one. Yeah, for sure. They nailed this one. And and I will say this to every golf magazine person publication that's out there. If you have not experienced Francis Byrne yet and they are not on your list, you're not doing your job well. Mm-hmm. You're not. I don't I it may not be your number one, it may not be your number two, but if it's not in your top five, you're not doing your job well enough. You're not. Because at the end of the day, for under a hundred dollars to play a course in this type of shape is unbelievable. Simply put, I don't care. There's no arguing with me. No. There's no arguing. It, it really is. And Mike, I, I just looked up uh, the the average price is sixty five dollars. Now, Ry, is that for a non? Uh, oh, here um, I just it was like on the top thing. Adult weekday, non card holder. So if you're not in Essex County, which we are, which we are, we're tra- we're not that. Yeah, which so we are. We, we fall under this. Adult weekday, sixty dollars. Okay. Adult weekend or holiday, $80. Now, I imagine that's just to walk because then they have a different price for 18-hole adult golf cart, $20. So on a weekend or a holiday, you're talking about exactly $100 with a golf cart. To or play you can course. walk. Or you can walk, and it's cheaper. And I'll tell it's, you what. And it's not, an, it's not a hard walk. I'll say that. It's not long distances before, between the holes. No, the holes are close together. I, it is hard because you're going up and down mountains. You're being a little bit of a mountain goat. But to your point, there's a bunch of holes where the green is, is, is there, and right next to it, right behind it, or 10 feet away, is the, is the tee box of the next hole. So it's not like, again, I'll throw Charleston as the example. I don't think you can walk Charleston because it, you got miles in between some of those holes. This one's not that. It's right it's right there. You're, you're not going very far. So to Mike's point, like you're talking maximum as a non Essex County, uh, uh, member member, resident. That's the word I'm looking for. The most that you're going to spend there is a hundred dollars golf card. And the most, the most. Uh, And, and again, if you go the other way, if you're a card member, right, then the cheapest you can get twilight weekdays is $30, right? Twilight, uh, Twilight Adult, $20. So you're talking about $50 for a cart Twilight to ride. You're stealing Highway money. robbery. You're stealing, Highway you're robbery. Yep, 100%. That's crazy to me because that, uh, again, that golf course, I don't want to make too bold of a statement. I don't, uh, I'm don't. i going to have to think on it. I don't know if it's better than Bally Owen. So, so there, it's not, it's not one in my opinion, but it might be two. It might be three. Might be it's four. a great it's, it's a great topic so, for so us good. when we yep. discuss when all we these there. public golf courses. Yeah, no doubt. There's excellent. no question about it. Uh, I really I, I mean we could keep slurping it all we all you know for hours, but it it's yeah, it's excellent. Really excellent. And the and the new renovations, they slap. You're gonna yep. love it. No doubt. No question about it. It's a must visit. Yeah. It's a must visit. It is. Uh, Mike, you uh, you got to play golf this week. I, I didn't get to go with you, but uh, can you tell us a little bit about your day at our place? I think you got to see Riley down at uh, Eagle Ridge. Um, can you give us a little bit on on? Yeah, a, a quick little shout out to, not to our week, one of our. You know, nah, yeah, a quick little shout out here to to All County. Um, our guy Ray over there invited invited me out to go play got some golf. Got to go see Eagle Ridge, and I think. The last time you and I were there is when we sat down with Riley a couple Novembers ago when the foliage, the foliage, foliage, foliage. Thank you very you much. Welcome. Not good with that word. Um, was was popping. Which hold on the the foliage at at Francisburg. Yeah, you talk about being in the mountains, right? If you're yeah. going now in October, man, it's got to be. You know, it's it's only going to continue to get better until there's no more leaves. But there's right. it's got to be beautiful there. Oh, and, and Eagle Ridge was just as just like I'm that. sure I, just I'll, the same. Yep. I'll, I'll say this about Eagle Ridge. You know, it's a unbelievable 27 hole public facility. You know, I know it's semi private, but you know, really that means the public can play at, at you know really whenever they want, depending they get a certain tee time. It's after like know. 10 o'clock, it's like super yeah. early. It's it, yeah. So so the- I'll say this: the course was in unbelievable shape. It really was. This time of the year, you're kind of fighting the aeration bug a little bit. Like I just had gotten. I played it and they had aerated it maybe seven to 10 days ago. So some of the greens you can see are still a little bumpy. Um, 
and that's unfortunate, but that comes with the nature of the business, especially being here in the Northeast. But when you look at the pictures that I'll put out there this week, the course is just hitting. And I'm sure now, maybe six, seven days later, it's in even better shape. But this is where I struggle. But I also understand it's, it is a business. The price to play there is rather expensive. It's rather expensive. So when you're talking in comparison to what we just had, where you have a cheaper end under $100, this one's north of $100. Now, pending what works for you and what your budget may be, it, it's a tough, it's a tough go back. Will I say, do I say you should go play Eagle Ridge? No doubt about it. That Lynx nine to me is one of the best nine holes mm -hmm. that this area has. So good. It's fun. It's so good. It's so hard. Um, I tipped the whole thing out and played the black tees. And, and you're talking nearly 6,900 yards, 7,000 yards with the wind howling at this place. Um, I, I Listen, the bunkers were in great shape. And Eagle Ridge, and I'm sure what I got a lot of the members out there were telling me, like, bunkers have never been this good. The bunkers had always been a problem at Eagle Ridge. Every time you hit in a bunker, the damn thing plugged. I'll say this. It never happened. The bunkers very well raked. No rocks, well manicured, tea boxes so good. Every time I looked in the distance and you saw all the trees and the foliage up there, it was everything just hit. It just hit. I listen. It's another spot in New Jersey when you're talking public golf. It's a must play. Now, price does matter to a lot of us. So when you're comparing prices, that may be on the outskirts because it's a little more expensive. But like any business, if people are willing to pay it. It's hard to argue it. And that tee sheet over at Eagle Ridge is jam-packed. Mm -hmm. So clearly people are okay with paying a little higher price to play there. Yeah, I mean, the, the semi-private does it a little bit for it, Mike. Uh, I, 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 It's just, it's so good. I, like you said, that Lynx 9, <laughs> I don't know of another, another nine holes – at a facility that has that like breaks it up like they do that has such a distinct like two different nines that are as good it is that 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 ridge to links when they do that routing there that's a great 18 holes it really is and and honestly it might rival what we're what we're talking about is being top 10 top 10 routing in the state it's in the conversation. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. Like when we're when we finally get to this this winter and 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 we know winter is coming and we have this conversation. This is winter going is like coming. I need like that yeah. reference. But I I do think it's going to get to the point where it's like we better do our homework mm -hmm. because we don't want to leave something out that needs to be in after I especially critique everybody for not including them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great day, though. Nonetheless, listen, great day. Thanks to Ray at All County. Yeah. Um, big sponsor of the show. Um, always fun getting out there and seeing those guys. For sure. Ray, we'll get out there and tee it up sometime. Mike, you uh, you got anything else for today's episode? I know we were heavy on, on golf courses, but that's, you know, again, we're, we're, no. when we go play somewhere, we want to tell you about it, guys. And, and that's Mike got to play Eagle Ridge, which we've talked about multiple times. I know I've talked about it individually. You're now talking about it. Eagle Ridge is, is a phenomenal, phenomenal spot. And then our, our day at, at Francis Byrne couldn't have been any better. I mean, it, it was it, it was great. People talk about it. We got up there, experience it. People are not wrong. Not wrong with that place. Listen, it's two public golf courses in New Jersey that anybody, anywhere can go play. I know we have opportunities to play the private courses and not everybody else does. So that that is that makes it more difficult. But here are two spots that before the winter time hits and the snow falls, you should go play and experience for yourself. I'd love to hear what people have to say about them. For sure. All right, guys, that's going to be it for us today. Uh, stay tuned for Thursday's episode. You got Tim Christ on the director of Essex County parks golf uh, with our, with our interview on Thursday till then. Cheers. Mm -hmm.